Hello people, I am Disha and welcome to Alter Answers, this channel we created because you are the best. So a lot of you are under a lot of pressure right now and facing a lot of anxiety because of the job scenario in the country. A lot of you have lost your jobs or some of them are on indefinite leave, you don't know when you're going back and it can cause a lot of problems. And there are so many people at this moment looking for work from home jobs, freelance opportunities and jobs that basically won't put them out of a job in a scenario like that. Well, I'm here to help. There is an industry right now which is the best to be a part of and that industry is digital marketing. Digital marketing is so vast, there's so many careers within this industry. I myself work in a digital marketing agency in Mangalore called Alter Marketing Management as a social media specialist. Now digital marketing itself is so vast, it gives you a world of opportunities and not just with regard to a salary. All brands, all companies right now are on the digital sphere because you're on it and they're not going to stop anytime soon. So what are you waiting for? Get into the digital field right away. Now keeping this in mind, Alter Answers is here to help you out. What we thought is we'll help you explore, learn and find the right opportunities within digital marketing. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to spend an entire week sharing with you tips, tricks, amazing resources and even conversations we have had with experts in the industry who learned without having an educational background in that field. So imagine how much help it is going to give you. So what we're going to do is basically help you tell you where to start, how to start. And where do we start now? We're going to start with one of my favorite careers within digital marketing industry, which is social media marketing. If you don't know how important a career social media marketing is right now, I have attached a link in the description. Please go and watch it and you will definitely know. So to talk about social media marketing, I have with us a social media marketer whose name is Rachit Hekte. He is a Facebook certified lead trainer. He's a Facebook ad specialist and a lead generation specialist. He is the co-founder of the Small Business Project, which is based in Mumbai. And he's an expert in something called as performance marketing, which is basically designing, setting up and running ads for various companies, including healthcare, fitness, as well as events. Fun fact, if you've known of the biggest TEDx event that happened in Asia, which is TEDx Gateway, which happened in Mumbai, the digital marketing, social media marketing especially, was done by Rachid and his team. Now, it is amazing that we're getting to talk to someone like this, but the best thing about him is that he started out not, not after he went through a lot of courses. He started out first when he was an engineering student and he was in charge of a Battle of the Bands event in his college and he wanted to promote it and he used Facebook and social media management practices to do it, which makes it very, very interesting. And I'm sure you're very interested to find out how he started out. So guys, join me in saying hello, Rachid. Hey, Disha. What's up? How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm keeping well. Thank you. Okay. So thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to have you here. The pleasure is mine, Disha. I know it is, Rachid. I know it is. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get straight to the first question. Um, so I know that you don't have a background in marketing. You're an engineer by profession. And yet you chose social media marketing as a career. So what exactly influenced you to choose it as a career or get into the field of social media marketing? Well, um, first and foremost, uh, I, I like I like people. I like dealing with people and um, I'm very fond of technology. And along the way, I think I like being backstage, working on a product uh, or service and seeing it come to life. And I think somewhere along the way, you know, a bridge between technology, people and marketing got me into digital marketing. We know the story about you starting out uh, your first uh, gig as a social media marketer was when you were uh, handling Battle of the Bands. Can you tell me something about that? Yeah, so um, I, I think it was uh, uh, it was about six six years ago. Uh, I think it was my fourth year in, in college, third or fourth year in college, I don't remember. But um, I was actually made to organize uh, an event called the Battle of the Bands. Uh, mm -hmm. You know the logistics putting it together and also the marketing and we were tight at uh, tight with budgets uh, back then right and uh, we wanted to see how we could make do with the resources in the best possible way 
and uh, i remember back then about 6 years ago i i spent like 100 or 200 rupees on 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 facebook ads uh and you know i saw some numbers come up so i think that was a curious start uh into uh digital for me that's really good to know and i'm glad that you started out that way it's a fun story to tell as well huh you spent a lot of time learning uh digital marketing and social media marketing so can you tell yeah. us what how exactly did you uh, learn the tools and develop the skills to become a social media marketer well um to to learn uh, courses there are multiple courses available online uh free and paid uh depending on what you want to go for depending if you have a budget or not um uh, i think going through those courses and actually applying it uh in and working on a portfolio because that makes a big difference fortunately for me i reached out to a couple of friends who were starting out their own uh, businesses and also people who had uh, taken up to their family businesses so that way for me i got a chance to experiment and explore and uh, try out whatever i was learning on these different uh, you know these different uh, businesses and that became my portfolio right um, it, it would be difficult for me to go get a client because uh, i would not have any credibility but this way you know uh, i was doing as much as uh, you know these people got their work done at uh, at no cost or probably free Uh, it was actually a bigger favor for me to have a portfolio to present to people beyond that so uh, let me ask you a more basic question because a lot of people don't really know what a portfolio is and how important it actually is so if you can tell us what a portfolio is and how exactly you built your portfolio a little more specifically if you could do that for us all right um so a portfolio a portfolio could be very specific based on which vertical of digital marketing uh you want to go to because like i said digital marketing is, is a large uh, you know it, it's a large field it has its own verticals within it you could be a, a person specializing in facebook ads in uh, search engine optimization and affiliate marketing and influencer marketing you could also be building websites in general which is your web basic web development right and it depends where you want to showcase uh, your uh, how you want to showcase a portfolio uh, but more importantly what where a portfolio stands out is if you are able to showcase how you were able to um uh, present or you know uh, showcase a growth of a business you associated or partner with from point a to point b during the time you uh you know you helped uh, and worked on it right so that gives a better uh vision uh, or sets a better uh, a standard for people wanting to uh, understand what a portfolio is supposed to look like okay so just to simplify it basically a portfolio is you know your practice it's like a practice pitch you create a lot of things based on your experience and then you have it to show for your clients in the future right yeah a best practice because also uh, you need to show the right kind of portfolio going forward for example if i have um, a portfolio for example of of 10 different kinds of businesses and if two or three of them could be a uh, portfolios of real estate and if i'm not too keen on working on the real estate uh, side although i might have worked on it it's not something i'd necessarily want to show as my portfolio so i heard that you went to a lot of friends when you were when you started out to uh, get their portfolio i mean to build your portfolio you kind of went to them and yeah. asked if you could do their websites is that true yeah uh, it, it worked both ways uh, they said hey you're doing this you're jobless why don't you do this i said yeah great <laughs> and also i requested people uh, if i could uh, uh, try out what i was learning uh, on their businesses because i was also certain that it was going to work uh and also okay. uh, it was it was it didn't come to all these people at a cost so they were willing to experiment also so it was a win win situation both ways okay so portfolio is really really important when you're starting out as a social media marketer yes it goes uh, it holds a much higher weightage than any certifications you get online they don't matter okay so now you've been in the industry for a while now can you tell me how long it actually takes for a freelancer to make money out of working as a social media marketer as a freelancer well um honestly since i got into digital marketing my first 3 months i think was a, a lot of learning on pure basics um and it uh, and i kept learning i i started taking projects 3 uh, months uh, i mean 3 uh, months into uh, the learning phase so If you ask me I think I actually started uh, m- you know making my first buck as a freelancer probably 5 months after I began my learning process 
it it could have begun earlier too um and this is something i would like to share you i don't think anyone needs to be in a hurry to earn that quick buck because the way i look at it there are enough businesses around us everybody needs marketing it's not a big deal if you go out there and actually get a client i mean it's really nice but you know it's not too difficult what actually matters is getting the right kind of uh, client by showcasing your, the right kind of work so um, if you actually end up uh, uh, working on yourself understanding tools and processes better in digital and um, uh, are able to build your portfolio uh, well and then go and uh, get a client that that would be a normal flow but if you ask me 6 months i think it took me 6 months i could have done it earlier i just chose not to that's nice uh, but for people who are looking for something more specific how much uh, would someone with your experience uh, make in a month just to be just to know how much that would be sure as 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 a freelancer you know you can a freelancer can bill uh, a client or a brand at you know 20000 rupees a month to 50000 rupees a month uh to even a lakh a month so it depends of uh, it depends on how much work you can handle if you can handle uh, two or three clients who are paying you about 40000 rupees a month yeah you can earn about a lakh and 40000 rupees a month as a freelancer but then again you know being a freelancer has your pros and cons i mean you're, you're a single man team uh which is going to be difficult because you can't uh, you know take days off uh you you're going to be you can't handle a crisis of three three clients at the same time so it has its pros and cons uh but yeah i mean it depends on the individual so anything between like say uh, even if you charge three different clients 10000 rupees each you can start with at least 30000 rupees a month wow so as a freelancer you can make 30000 a month that's yeah. really good okay so uh, now to get into something more um, serious now once you develop the tools and you develop the skills to be a social media marketer how and where did you find the clients because you know they're not like sitting there waiting for you how did you find your clients uh to be honest with you um, most of my clients i found at uh, at a party my first client i found um, at the bar quite literally uh and then oh, it, <laughs> and uh, mo- most of them but um and that, that's quite true right uh, i think for me personally personal connections has worked a lot because if you've done work for somebody and uh, you know uh, there's a very and if they're happy there's a very high chance uh, that they will refer you to their peers in their network because again if you refer someone good uh you know it's a it's a pat on their back as well right uh, because a good referral goes a long way uh, apart from that i did i did use different uh, facebook groups uh, i mean everyone should be aware that every city town has some localized facebook group or the other right where people are probably wanting something to sell wanting a service or wanting help or whatever uh every city has it a bangalore has it bombay has it bangalore has even more localized groups for every area like in indranagar would have their own groups right so tapping into these groups and not selling your product right you want to be offering value uh people would post a quest a question or a problem on their group go there help them out uh, get on a call with them solve that problem for them you never know i mean uh, if if you manage to build a trust which i think for me at least has been the biggest um, uh it a factor because if you if you uh give someone value uh they are able to trust you and they would like to work with you in the long run and then uh referrals come so word of mouth is the best way to uh you know to get across your clients but to make a start uh you have a lot of uh, facebook groups uh, that uh you know p- p- people inquire and also there are there are freelance platforms uh upwork dot com freelancer dot com are up are, are platforms they are very competitive um you need to be uh you know good at closing a deal to be able to get uh your projects on on these platforms because it's a bidding it's a bidding way it's a way you you bid for a particular project and at the same time it's how you communicate to them to actually land your gig so these things matter on on platforms like this uh but why i choose to prefer like you know a facebook group over an upwork personally and this is what's worked for me uh is because if i if i establish a connection over a facebook group i don't know it's just that i feel there's a friendlier approach already uh if someone's on upwork or, v, or, or on freelancer.com it's um the chances of them there on that platform for a one time gig is very high right um on 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 any of the other channels you could look at uh, having associating on a longer period of time but it's not entirely true because uh, you know what if uh, i i i recently did a gig uh, on upwork 
where uh, where the client said hey listen i'm calling you the next time i'm, I'm not saying this so you know it depends on your rapport with with the with the client okay fine so i guess like you know it, it was very interesting that you said that you started with you know socializing with people and that's how you found your clients but i guess now with the lockdown pandemic social distancing that wouldn't be possible so the best bet would be facebook groups and then freelancing websites and uh, job sites like you said so that's really uh, helpful thank you and uh, the next question i have for you is um, you know a lot of people say that having a mentor uh, in a certain industry that you're entering having a mentor is a great thing because they'll help you because they have experience in that field so do you think that having a mentor is you know is required for someone who's starting out you know it's a tricky question uh, i can speak for myself i don't think it's important to have a mentor uh i don't think it's important to be confined to one person for all your advice and needs uh i think it's important to have an open mind uh get your information uh, and resources and uh you know advice from different people uh irrespective of the kind of expertise or industry they come from because you never know where you can find uh, value and pick up some information and work on it um having said that i do come across um you know i mean we, i'm sure we all do come across times where we you know we glorify a certain personality or a person uh and we are enamored by the kind of work they do and uh you know we, we go crazy about them right and 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 it's normal to feel that way and uh i i i feel that too at times with certain people and um the point is i'm aware of it and i also choose not to be attached to that and i think that's important um literally uh, a few days ago i was sitting with a 8 year old uh, uh, you know helping the 8 year old on 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 something on on a computer on a tool and that 8 year old taught me a tool i was really searching for on the internet for a long time right uh, and specifically for my uh, my system requirements and i said wow thank you you made my life a lot easier right so i think anyone who can give you some kind of direction irrespective of who they are where they're from they are your mentor but don't restrict to one that is the best thing i've heard today i think that we can learn uh, anything and everything from the people we meet from the books we read whatever and everything right? that's really good advice so um you know the life of a freelancer is really glorified on social media you know uh, how they tell you that you know you can sit by the beach and you know you have your laptop and you can work and you have couples traveling the world and making money as freelancers so i just want to know what is the reality behind this what is your experience been like as a freelancer about uh, working and sipping margarita by the beach <laughs> yeah. did you do that i have but then you know it's it's a, it's a one day in your life or probably one day in your year i mean it's not every day i mean you have to work you have to be realistic you have to be practical right uh yeah there have been a few days like that and i can count the number of days so probably two or three days in an entire year uh but but no uh you know especially the freelancer life is over glorified um on on instagram uh, it, it is it is i mean there are two sides there are true and false sides to it uh you have your freedom so you can literally do what you want yes uh but the whole uh, flashy cars and uh, you know big pools the spontaneous traveling i think a lot of it isn't actually uh what it is uh, i do know a couple of people who lead such lives and uh, are very good at it but i also do know that a majority of people uh you know don't actually lead lives like that so if you ask me instagram is instagram because it's supposed to look good people put out your best pictures <laughs> <laughs> that's very Okay, so now that we know what your opinion is of that, uh, can you tell me what a day in the life of a social media marketer is? A day in your life? A day in my life? Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's. I mean, just like every other job has its own challenges and is probably hectic in its own way. Uh, for us, it's a lot of screen time, right? I mean, it's a lot of phone time, it's a lot of um, communication, and all of that. Especially if you're working on a brand where things are being launched. uh posts need to be uh, live ads need to be live there's a lot of coordination and communication right so i i begin my day by you know literally going over my tasks lists and things i need to be done uh, normally i have a preset 
uh, set of calls that I have scheduled for the day, which I have to take make. Um, and that's normally uh, set uh, over the weekend. I, I make sure I set my calls uh, ahead. Um, uh, but then during the rest of the time, it's making sure things are going all right. Uh, finances are in check. Uh, clients are happy. Marketing strategies are in place. Coordinating with the team. Um, and every day is this probably something new, uh, a new problem uh, to solve. So um, there's no definite way how the day goes. But yeah, that's uh, in a nutshell, that's how it is. But you enjoy this, uh, the life that you're leading as a social media marketer? I do. I do. I, I, I enjoy the, somehow there's some method in the madness here. Method in the madness. <laughs> nice. So, um, is there any book or you know resource you would recommend for someone who's starting out as a social media marketer? Because I myself am very interested in the topic and if I want to learn, usually I pick up a book or two to read about it. I'm better with reading books. Yeah. So is there any book or resource you would recommend? You know, for, for a person starting out on social media and digital marketing, uh, books are a great point to go for if you want to understand something in principle. Uh, the only way, the, the only reason is uh, because I feel, uh, and this is what I genuinely feel, uh, digital is so dynamic and uh, technology updates itself so fast that if someone has to write something down, uh, publish a book, go for printing, get it on the shelf, I mean, that's a lot of time things have, are, you know, are redundant. They're not updated anymore, right? So uh, I think on the digital side, I personally read a lot of blogs. Uh, I read at least a minimum of five to ten blogs every day and i have to i i I, uh, I read from marketing land from social media today from social media marketing world um from sem rush has a couple of bl nice blogs uh written neil patel uh writes nice stuff of course everyone knows that um th these are some of the blogs because blogs are written more spontaneously and updated then and there so um, as opposed to books books have that principle defined uh i'm but if you want to something that you want something that's updated, I guess podcasts or blogs are more up to date. Is there any podcast that you listen to, you know, religiously? Um, I, um, I, 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 I'm a person that gets bored too quickly. I need to consume information uh, to and, and keep moving over. Uh, there's there's one there's uh, business Wars is a nice uh, uh, podcast, but of course it's more on the business side of things. Uh, there, there's an interesting podcast uh, by Sean Ellis, who the person who wrote who wrote the book Hacking Growth. Oh, by the way, you you asked about the book, you asked for books, right? So yeah. there's a book called Hacking Growth by Sean Ellis, which is which is nice. Uh, Sean has also also has a podcast. Um, I'm not sure what it's called. It's called uh, um, I think we can figure it out and we can put it here. I, but it's 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 a, it's a podcast by Sean Ellis, um, and that's really interesting for those looking at scaling startups. Uh, understanding how the process, the back, uh, the behind the stage, uh, and the behind the scenes of scaling and growing these uh, businesses. So, so that's that's an interesting one. I, I'm not getting the name, but yeah, I'm sure we can plug this in here. We'll I, I think I'll in. find it and I'll link it over here in the video so they can go and you know visit the yeah. and hear the podcast. On. Okay, so now looking at the scenario, now you've had experience in this field. Based on your experience and the current scenario. Um, what advice would you give someone who would like to start out as a social media marketer? Still a great time. There are enough businesses that are out there needing these services. So, uh, yeah, the, it's a great time to be getting into social media marketing, uh, digital marketing, uh, any of these verticals. Uh, I, I don't think the person should uh, look at, you know, making a quick buck because there's no shortcut to it. Learning, okay. learning uh, the tools, well understanding them experimenting uh you know that that's that's a process uh, someone needs to look into uh, uh, look into and not look at one of these how do you become a millionaire overnight schemes that's not real <laughs> so you know keep growing okay. i mean you, uh, this, i don't think there's anyone who's an expert in this field there are uh, it, it, the industry is so dynamic there's so much to learn so yeah uh i'm just you know adding this to it what advice would you give your younger self to when you started out if you know based on whatever you've learned so far is there anything you would go back and tell your younger self you know to advice you would give your younger self basically so it, it depends this question are you asking me before i did engineering or after i did engineering was it two different answers 
<laughs> okay say so after you did engineering after i did engineering um so after i did engineering um i applied with uh, two companies actually i i applied with uh, the minimalist uh, from bombay i applied with facebook uh, singapore uh both of which uh, i i got to quite a decent uh, part of the interview uh, i think for facebook it was the top uh, something 30 or something like that for the singapore role and i think for 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 minimalist was the reason why i made my first trip to um, uh, to mumbai in the first place and we had an uh, i had an interview i think with chirag of minimalist uh at that time i think my objective was to uh to find a job if i was going to be associated with uh companies with good visions and you know uh were here for the long run otherwise i would want to choose a, a freelance route or an agency route that was my objective um so if i had to do anything differently that's going to be hard because i don't think i can i would do i'm happy uh with the way we are progressing um of course my there there are more micro level uh, uh decisions i would have made differently probably i would not have signed off for cert- signed off on certain clients i would not have taken on certain work because a, a lot of clients can slow you down uh you know and hamper your growth so that way i think i would have avoided uh certain uh, certain clients so now for those who are listening and watching right now if you could give a few steps to start out as a social media marketer that it would make it easy for them to transition and to get into the industry what would those yeah. steps be uh the first first step is to learn learn uh, study some courses there are enough courses free courses online you can put yourself through a paid course or you could do a free course um but but then it depends on you know if if you have the bandwidth to go through a structured course and if it fits, uh, suits your budget that's that's a route you can take um if you and and soon after doing this course or while you're doing this course it's important to at least get yourself two clients or two prospects of you know your uncles fathers friends business and work on it experiment on it so you can learn while you're you know while 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 you're working on it because you don't want to be experimenting on uh, a person who's just given you uh, a business and paid you and you know goof it up right if you do it well that's a different case but uh, you know that's you you would want to not you would not want to get into that kind of a situation um once you finish your learning process finish your portfolio building process and then decide if you want to get into a job freelance or start your own business each of them have a, a beautiful career path uh, and uh, uh, you know and, and they're each nice in their own way it depends if you want to work with an agency or if you want to work with a brand if you want to freelance yourself or if you want to build a team together and uh, offer the same services to other people or if you have a product in mind and if you understand digital marketing uh, you can always sell that product using these skills right um but then you know uh, it, it again i'm going i'm just going back to the first uh, point of having to learn uh while there are so many courses paid courses out there uh it's not necessary to actually buy a paid course there's enough resources for free and having said that i mean i mean and this is despite saying that because we have our own course too um and 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 we follow a very structured uh approach of how uh, a person can learn facebook and instagram ads effectively and also we teach them how and where to get clients and you know about proposals and all of that right so it depends what you want uh, at the end of the day uh, and how well you are determined to be learning and that 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 would that 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 would be a decent start saying that your course that you know you've launched recently uh, in that course you're basically sharing all of these things that you learned over the years and you're making it easy for the people who want to learn so that they can apply it very easily yeah completely because i didn't know a lot of things i didn't work at an agency i didn't work uh, uh, i didn't have a freelancer to guide me i figured it out myself i compared business models with other business models with brands with with uh, marketers I, i i learned from a lot of different uh, marketers because one thing in digital marketing people need to understand is it's okay learning a digital learning digital marketing from a course from an institute 
because they are teaching your basics they are teaching your fundamentals but when you learn from another marketer uh, and i'm not just putting myself on a pedestal here i'm just generally giving you my perspective if you learn from um, a marketer you get a different uh, point uh, point of view because it's 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 at the end of the day the job is very similar to like say uh, a doctor right um if you and i have the same illness and we go to two different doctors uh, those two doc- doctors are going to have a different approach and give and start and give us different prescriptions right and it's the same thing with marketing as well uh, uh, you might have your approach and i might have my approach and they can be completely different and it's okay to be completely different but at the end of the day you want to be learning from people who have tried tested those uh, uh, you know do uh, and have tried tested methods and learn from them so which is why i mean we we are putting in a few case studies we're putting in examples we're telling people what to do what not to do and also tell them what they can do beyond learning it like how they can find a living for themselves so uh, whoever is watching right now if you'll want uh, to know more about rajit's blog we will i mean uh, rajit's course we will be linking it below in the description so you can definitely check it out uh, so i guess rajit that would be the end of uh, you know the questions that i have for now i have too many of them but i'm still restricted to that much now thank you so much uh, you've been thank amazing the advice you gave is very practical and i know that it's going to help people who want to start out so thank you so much for doing this thank you for taking the time and for joining us on all the answers thank you dishar i was happy answering all these questions and i uh, wish you guys all the best you guys are doing some really nice stuff thank you so much talk to you soon then bye okay.